exam that you need to pass to get your resting. Either you're challenging your IP rectal exam or you have gone through four years of apprenticeship. You bought your fourth year ticket, which is called the journeyman ticket, where you don't have the red seat. Okay? So let's go ahead from the first page forward. The first page just talks about table of contents. Okay? As we move forward, you will get more and more booklets, so you should organize it the way these table of contents are. Okay? In your binder. That's why everybody was supposed to bring a binder today. If you don't have it, make sure you do have it for your next class. Okay? The first topic that I'm going to be teaching you is all about introduction. So let's flip through this a bit and let's understand what this exam is all about. The page that you see right behind talks about red seal in this year. Electrical IP red seal refresher course on the exam is red seal exam. It has 100 questions. If you see on the bottom, you add all these numbers, 15, 23, 25, this tells you the percentage of how this exam is divided, okay? The first one talks about common occupational skills, means basic trade knowledge. If you put a ladder, what angle your ladder should be at. If uh, the question's on women's symbol, question on if I'm using a multimeter or a voltmeter, should be connect connected in series or parallel. Question, basic trade questions. I'll be going through all of that with you, okay? Topic B and C technically is nothing but code. So lots and lots of code questions. If you add 23 and 25, it's 48. 48% 48 bang on directly from part B and part C of the exam, okay? Part D is motors and control systems. Motors and control systems used to be 20% of the exam, whoever wrote the exam last year. Since the new code came, which is 2012 code, which was actually accepted in 2013 last year, if you wrote the exam in for 2009 code and now 2012, the exam is changed from 20 questions to 16 questions. So now we only have 16 questions. I've been told over and over again in my numerous classes that people do not feel comfortable doing questions on control part of the motor. They know motor calculation really well, but they don't know what a normally closed contact is, what is a normally open contact, if I have a coil, and a, or if I have a relay and this is my contact, if I switch normally closed to normally open, what would happen? If I push this uh, a start button, what would happen? If I put this red light and I push the start button, what would happen? Questions like that. And we will go through that. Um, 100% as well. There are 16 questions. It's half and half. 50% you get on section 28, which is motor section. The remaining 50%, which is eight questions out of 16, comes from control part of the motor, okay? If you don't know anything about motor control, I will recommend you a book as well. It's coming up as we go to the next page. The one after D is E, E says signaling and communication systems. Communication systems, First of all, let's understand what is low voltage, what is extra low voltage, and what is high voltage. I have been told a lot, a lot of people come into the office and say, oh, I'm a low voltage guy, I work for Shopper Shaw Cable. That is actually a wrong statement. Low voltage does not mean low voltage. What we work with is low voltage. Up to 750 volts is called low voltage. Above 750 is called high voltage. The guys who work for Shaw Cable is zero to 30 volts. That's called extra low voltage, okay? You will be getting questions on signaling and communication systems, which is under 30 volts. So questions on class one and class two circuits, which is section 16. Then questions on communication, which is section 16. Uh, we'll be going through all of that as well as we go along, okay? The last section is upgrading maintenance and repair. Ratio proportion question, series and parallel question on two resistors in parallel. If I break the neutral, what will be my current or voltage across each load, those kind of questions. Questions on if this is, if I have four bands on the resistor, red, blue, black, orange, or red, blue, black, silver, what is the value of that resistor? Those kind of questions. That's why it comes in upgrading service and repair, okay? If you add all these numbers, you get 100% means you have 100 <coughs> questions. How many marks do you need to pass this exam? 70. What that means is you have 100 multiple choice questions. Out of 100 multiple choice, you gotta get 70%, means 70 questions should be right. Anything beyond 70 is better. Anything less than 70, 69 is a fail. 70 and above is a pass, okay? Now let's get familiar with what do you see in your exam when you write the exam. When you go write the exam, you get three booklets if you have not written this exam before, okay? These are, these are how these three booklets are gonna look like. One page and then two big booklets. 
one page. I'll come back to this a bit in like a couple of seconds. Let's do this first. On this book, what do you see? I will say a construction electrician exam, and it's divided into six sections exactly how I went through with you. First section will be trade concepts, which is trade knowledge, which is occupational skills. You will see 15 questions on this. Then section B or block B, block C, all the way to block F. Total number of questions on this booklet, 100. Every question, one question, A, B, C, D choices. If there is a diagram question, let's say they say, oh, based on <coughs> diagram 42, what is the voltage across that load? That's all is the question and you're given four choices, 20 volts, 100 volts, 120 volts, 200 volts. Then you go to your second booklet called the diagram booklet and look for diagram 42. Okay? Once you get to diagram 42, you will see maybe two resistors are connected in parallel and one is 100 ohm, second is 200 ohm, and the current is one amp. The question is what is the voltage across one resistor? Something along those lines. Okay? So diagram booklet is your booklet too. Another third booklet is a one-page booklet where it, you give your name, telephone number, your, your ID number, if you have all of that personal information along with it. Then it's one page underneath that talks about question number one to question 125 with four circles. Okay? Circle just like here. You will be getting, getting like this, one, and then you have four circles. And on top, it says A, B, C, and D. Same thing, question two, four circles, you pick A, B, C, and D. And this goes all the way to 125 question, A, B, C, and D. When you see this booklet, let's say you did question one and answer to that question is C. You go ahead and highlight C properly. If you don't highlight properly, you lose a mark, like really properly. Don't leave half and think, oh, you know what, I'm not sure if this is my answer for now, I'm just gonna highlight half and then come back to it later. Because even if it's right or wrong, you're gonna get it wrong because machine checks this, it's called Scantron. What ITA does is put this under a Scantron and Scantron tells you how many questions are right or wrong. That's why usually you're not allowed to take coffee, you're not allowed to take anything to eat because if these sheets get bad, then it doesn't go under the machine, it doesn't give you the right result, okay? Have your, always have the watch. They don't have a clock at, uh, sometimes in that examination room, always have your watch. You can't take anything, code book, paper, pen, pencil, nothing, no cell phones for sure, no texting, okay? Why? Because people used to cheat. Now they give you their brand new code book. They give you paper, pen, pencil, even calculators too. Okay, so you go empty handed, come back empty handed, all you have is your watch. Sometimes people even try to cheat with their watch because there is a camera built in as well, but just make sure have a proper watch because they don't have a, sometimes a clock in the room. Uh, why 125? Good question. I'm, I was hoping somebody would ask me this. They created this sheet for everybody in the, in the trade. Could be plumbing, electrical, pipe fitting. Plumbing, plumbers get 125 questions, okay? When you saw this sheet, you are gonna stop at 100 because that's all you're supposed to do. This is not your exam, okay? So 100 questions, what my recommendation is, my two cents, and of course you will do what works for you. If you don't know about any of the questions after this course, you wrote the exam, you spent 30 minutes figuring out C, because it was a math question or whatever that is, right? Your choice to first question took 30 minutes to figure out. End of the day, it's one more question. One mark, one minute, that's all you get. Anything more than one minute, not worth your time. Okay, what I'd like you to do, if you got this booklet, you did question one, your choice is C, fine. First eight questions, you did it in eight or 10 minutes, you are perfect on time. 11th question you saw, you know it's a question on transformers. You can't really figure it out, where is transformers? You look through the book, you found one section, luckily you know it's in section 26, you got to that section, you ended up doing calculation that took you, what, 10 minutes to do. All of that process took you 20 minutes. Not worth your time, okay? Out of 100 questions, you have a choice of doing 30 wrong and still pass the exam. So, question number nine, if I were you, what would I do? Or A, B, C, D, I'll try to get rid of two choices. A and D, let's say if we said, 100 amp is my FLA of the motor, what's my conductor size, okay? Now, I don't know where motors are because my teacher didn't teach me well. So I don't know what the motor, where motor, I still have to do that question. Took 
me 10 minutes to find motors and 10 minutes to find the rule, 20 minutes gone by. But my four choices were 20 amp, 80 amp, 125 amp, and 200 amp. I know my conductor size cannot be less than my load. Yes or no? Okay, so I got rid of two choices, the 20 amp and 100 amp. My conduct or 20 and 80 amp, for example, those were my two choices when my motor has an FLA of 100 amps. I know it will be either 100 or more than 100 if I'm looking for my conductor size. So out of ABCD, I got rid of two choices. Now I only have 125 amp and 200 amp. I know it's either C or D. Just go with your gut and pick C or D, whatever you choose. Okay? But mark that question on this booklet, which they're going to take back. Circle question number nine and say, I'll come back to it. Try to finish your 100 questions in 100 minutes. Latest 120 minutes. Okay, the remaining time, four hours means 60 times four, 240 minutes. If you could finish two minutes of question, 100 questions are done in 200 minutes. You still have 40 minutes to come back to those questions. 40 minutes is a lot of time. Out of 100, if you only had 10 or 15 questions to come back to, you still have time. But don't lose your whole exam because of one question. And another thing is that my one of my students is very bright, but he ended up failing and he got 42%. Why? When he got his results card, he got 100% in block A, 100% in block B, and from block C, he was off by one. What did he do when he got to question number, let's say 35? Four choices. He did not know what to pick. Then he went to 36, okay? He knew exactly 36 choices A. He ended up putting that on 35. Because he thought he'll come back to it, so he's not gonna choose any of the choices. So once he got to 99, he was actually on 100. And he didn't have time to come back and erase everything. So he got 100% up to like question 34 and after that everything was off. He got 20%, 40%, those kind of marks. Because when you get your final card, they give you exactly what percentage you got in each block. So you know what block you are weaker at. Yeah? So my two cents is don't leave anything empty. 35th question, let's say you have absolutely no idea what to do. Just pick whatever, but at least pick and lightly color it so you can come back and erase it with your eraser and, and choose the choice that you thought in the at a later part of your exam that yeah, A is wrong, I'm gonna choose C, so I'm gonna erase A and put choice on C. So then you choose it properly. Then at least don't mark on this sheet at all. If you mark anything, the whole exam is canceled. Okay, because it's, as I said, it's not checked by a person, it's checked by a machine. Overall, this exam is not hard to really pass, okay? Now, let's keep going through this booklet. Let's get familiar with our exam a bit more. Now, right under, on the next page, it talks about the breakdown of your exam as well. Where does each block come from? Section one, section two means block A, block B. They are all up to six sections, means six blocks. You have four hours to do the exam, and you have Pass percentage is 70%, okay? Then you flip your page forward, come to recommended books and resources. I would strongly, with all my guts, will try to ask you to buy the top book called Electrician's Guide to AC Motor Control. Anybody that has taken any kind of apprenticeship, even level one, that's recommended in full-time schools. So if you, you could buy it, it's $28 book, the cheapest book it's really good in understanding basic concepts of motor control um, strongly recommend it to you guys it's twenty dollars well worth the, the money if you don't want to buy rent it from library if you don't want to rent borrow it from your buddy whatever do that so you have it okay this is very important because as i said two sections mostly people are weaker at section one which is occupational skills and section D, which is motors and control systems. Motors, I will, I promise you, I'll make you really good on, on section 28, it's all calculations, but the remaining eight questions, yes, we'll be practicing a lot of motor control questions, but if the concept, basic concept of motor control is not clear, which this book is gonna help you do, then you lose like that 50% of the mark. Why do that? Questions are very simple, okay? Now the next page talks about web-based resources. Web-based resources means on the website, or online, what websites are available that are good. If I don't know what an EMT is, if I don't know what an ENT is, if I don't know how is a single dwelling different
different than, let's say, a uh, apartment building from a calculation standpoint, or if I don't know what is the difference between overcurrent protection and overload protection is, what is the difference between a fuse or a breaker, if I don't know the difference between an inductor or a capacitor, what do I do? In the past, we didn't have Google.ca, that's why we had Codebook, which is section zero, which talks about definitions, but it only gives you definition of that um, certain thing that you're looking for. If you're looking for what is to know more online is great resource. My personal uh, website that I absolutely like for anything to know about uh, electrical or mainly electrical or electronic sources, followboxcircuits.com. It's really good, it gives you a lot of information. I've been told that people buy exams from the website called um, exambank.com as well. Any question that you can get from exambank.com for free, take it. If you have to pay, don't do it. I'm going to give you so much material for the next six weeks, you'll be just putting your head down and studying. Tons and tons of questions to practice. So after you are in this course, you really don't need to buy anything else. Okay? Don't spend any more money buying any more stuff. All I'm going to give you is questions after questions after questions to practice. The material you get here is sufficient. If you don't know anything about this exam, you don't know code, you feel at this point you're sitting at ground zero, buy the CSA ESAT zip drive. Have you heard of that? Yeah, that comes very handy. It used to be a CD. CSA creates a CD, it's called Electrician Self-Assessment Tool. It's right here written as well, item number three. If you go one page backwards on recommended books and resources. It's a, it's a CD that, created by CSA, now it's now, it, it doesn't come as a CD anymore, it comes as a zip drive or a hand drive, because people used to uh, somehow copy the CD, now they make it a drive so people can copy. Regardless, it's a very good tool. Uh, it, the tool is divided into six sections, just like how your exam is. So let's say if you wrote an exam in the past, and you know your weakest link is motors and control systems. So what do you do? You click on motors and control system, then you will get 30 questions to do. You practice 30 questions. You did question one, A, B, C, D choices, just like exam. And question is, same question, 100, 100 amp is my FLA of the motor, what's my conductor size? You chose 100 amp, but the choice answer is 125 amp. So it will tell you why you did wrong, what you did wrong, where in code book it says that it should be 125% of the opacity. Okay? Great tool, if you don't know much about good code, great tool, if you know, kind of know about code, 50%, 60%, then just the notes I'm gonna give you is all you need. But if you <coughs> don't know anything about anything, that CD, one thing that it does help is make you fast in, in learning your code book. So if you see a question on, let's say grounding and bonding, the first one second it'll ring your bell, that it'll ring the bell in your head that it's on section 10. How do you know that much? Because you have practiced the CD over and over and over again. Okay, so for timing wise to make you faster in, in finishing the exam, believe you me, four hours seems very long, but when you're writing this exam, it goes like, oh, it's done. Just like this class, it will be done very soon. I, I promise I'll try to make it as fun as, you, as it could be okay, but it goes very fast. So basics of electrical is where I'm gonna start from. Do you guys see a nice looking chart? Talking about Ohm's law. The current in the resistance, current is proportional with the voltage and first proportional with the resistance. Perfect. Current is directly proportional to? With the, the voltage. With the voltage. And inversely proportional to Inversely proportional to resistance. Yeah, that's... Imagine I had, I had no clue of what electrical is. And if you are telling me this is what Ohm's law is, I have no idea what you explained. So assuming that this person doesn't know anything about voltage, current, and resistance, how would you explain to, in, to someone in layman's term? I'm sure your spouse has asked you, what is voltage? You keep talking about I'm working on 220 volts. Isn't it? Or you don't get this question because it's not to their interest. Don't you get this question? What, you keep on saying you're working on 120, well, what is volt? So you don't, don't you get this question? How would you explain to someone that doesn't know anything about electrical, what is voltage? No idea. It's water off the pipe. It's water off the pipe, perfect. Is that voltage? Yes. So the water is uh, voltage, the pipe is voltage, or the flow is voltage? The, the flow is voltage. Okay, and what is water then? Pressure. Pressure, yeah. and okay, you're almost there, keep staying with me. So tell me, if I have, if I push this, okay? If I push this, what did I do? I provided a force, 
force, right? If I provided a force, a marker moved. What is that movement? Response to the push. What is this push called voltage? The response you got because the water moved or the pen moved is what? Current. Because of what? The weight of the marker. So weight of the marker will dictate how far it's going to go and the push itself as well. So with that same push, if I did this, the mug would not move maybe let's say one inch, but with the same push, the marker will move 10 inches. Why? For the same amount of push, you get more response because weight of that equipment is less, which is called resistance. So the weight of equipment is your resistance. The response you got because the marker moved is called current. The push you gave on that marker is called voltage. Are we good? So please write it down. Ohm's law states that, write down the word Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that, Ohm's law states that, English is my second language as well. If you don't understand my accent, make sure you do ask. I don't care if you ask the same thing 10 times. Make sure you understand before you leave this room tonight or at 4.30 when you leave, okay? Ohm's law states that, I'm going to write down as well. Current in an electrical circuit. Is directly proportional to.
sugar is calculated in grams. Same thing, V is calculated or measured in volts, V for volts. Resistance is measured in ohms, if you want to write it down, and current is measured in amps. Volts is represented by capital V, ohms is represented by a symbol called omega, and amps is represented by capital A, capital A for amps. So this is easy. Why don't we do one thing? I'm going to give you an electrical circuit. What I'd like you to tell me is the unknown. So draw the schematic. I'm going to name this as example one. Okay. I'll draw the schematic. I'm going to give you a resistance value of 20 ohms. The source voltage is 120. All I need you to find me is load current. You have 30 seconds. Let's go. How did you do, Herman? Uh, uh, is that V over I? So, oh, so I sorry, is equal uh, v to over R. V over R. What yeah. formula did you pick? One, two, or three? Two. Formula number two. Perfect. So, I is equal to? V over R. V over R. What's your voltage given? Uh, 120. Voltage is 120. What's your resistance given? 20. So, load current is V over R. Voltage is 120. Resistance is 20. What do I get? 6 amps. 6 amps. Perfect. So, now let's just take an example from just given value of voltage and resistance. If I ask you, Herman, again, what would happen if I double my voltage to 240? I'm going to use another marker. Let's use a black one to just clear it and draw it. And I'm going to put, what if I change the value to 240 for my source voltage? What would happen to my load current and what would happen to my resistance? The double. What would happen? Sorry. Let's just name it as, this is my V old. Let's just name V new being 240 volts. If my voltage is 240 and my resistance, do you think my new resistance will get double as well here? Yeah. The 20 ohm will become 40 ohm? Why would it happen? Take the same light bulb, take it to India. The resistance will change? No. Only voltage will change. That will eventually change the current, which is brightness of that light bulb. Okay, so the resistance new and old will remain the same, which is 20 ohms. Once I have these values, I divide both numbers, voltage and resistance. What do I get for my new current? 12. 240 over 20, which will lead to? 12. 20 ohms, which will lead to 12 amps. Good job. So what did we just learn? Go ahead and copy if you want to exam copy this example. Make it as example A, 1A. In example 1A, draw another circuit. Increase the voltage to 240, how I drew it, and say what would happen to your current? Your current doubles as well. What that really means is when my voltage is doubling, my current doubles along with it. That's why we call it current is directly related to voltage. 